the boss man show in front of the show, Coach of the Furman, our SoCon, 10 and 5 on the year. Coach Bob Richie, how you doing, brother? Good to talk to you again. Doing good, boss man. Appreciate you having me on. Always, always a pleasure to uh, do the do the annual interview. Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, tell us about this, man. We talked about it off the air, but how was this COVID year for you, you and your staff from March on through the spring and summer, man? Because I know for me, uh, I was getting ready to cover the tournament when you came to, they came to the Final Four in Atlanta come, come in, but then COVID happened, they got canceled. So how was it for you and your staff telling guys goodbye for the last time and moving from on campus to virtual and being at home? So how was that for you and your staff, man? Yeah, you know, it's, it's been quite a year and, um, you know, it's it's one of those deals for us, to be honest with you. Uh, leadership's never been more important, you know what I mean? And just understanding that we've got to make sure that we navigate this appropriately and that, you know, there's there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, and, and, and safety's got to be the number one, you know, objective for sure. Responsibility in our protocols has got to be up there. But then also, I think there's got to be you know, fr from the leadership of the organization, there's also got to be some hope that, you know, that, that we can navigate this and that, that we can, we can get through this. And I think that's, that's been the hard part. And a lot of this is, it's, it is heavy, you know, that I don't think anybody's going to deny that, uh, but we still have a responsibility to lead as best we can through it. And so, you know, I've just tried to be my best, you know, and I have been perfect, but um, you know, we, we've got some guys that need us and they need, they need, a lot more than than our directives on a basketball court right now. They 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 need us in different areas of their life to be able to navigate some of this. And um, you know that's my responsibility to them that that I can make sure that I'm upbeat and that that, that I'm I'm showing them a way and um, that I'm helping them navigate through this. Coach, I feel you on that because I have six six interns, coach, and I have to be and I kind of have to be in there, the leader, their mentor, their father figure, their point person for everything to do with COVID, life, and everything in general. And for me, coach, I become a better, better leader, leader this year because of the COVID. Because having to look at things away from just hey, do this, do that, I have to be more available, more give them that shoulder, more listen to them more because they're 18, 24 years old. I'm 33, so I'm look, I got some age on these on my insurance, but they're looking to me as the point man to help them navigate COVID, the racial stuff, the election stuff, hadn't you know, un, all that uncertainty. Is now I'm the one who have to be responsible for these young these kids here who their parents sent to me to be my intern. So if coach, I feel you having to be of leadership and be look at yourself in different ways. Kind of make sure you take the right steps to lead them in the right the right direction every day, all day. Yeah, I think it's critical. You know, I mean, I, I think we all can acknowledge how hard it is and how heavy it is. You know, but that doesn't mean we ha we have to that it has to defeat us, right? That doesn't mean that it has to overtake us and overwhelm us to a point that we can't, um, you know, can't as a country, as a, as as a as, as groups of people, um, as teams, you know, try to navigate it and um, and get better as as we go through it and and try to do it as safe as we can and um, and, and as responsible as we can. But it's, you know, it's a hard year. It's, it's unique in a lot of different ways. You know, it takes us two shows probably to go through everything that we've had to adjust, oh, yeah. what, we, what we've had to do. But it's, um, you know, hopefully as the vaccine starts to, as starts to you know, um, get, get dispersed, that, um, that there's some light at the end of the tunnel, you know, as we get through the winter and into the spring. Um, but, yeah, this, is, this, is, this has been unique, man. It's, it's, I, feel like, I feel like, you know, there's a couple things going on from, from a leadership standpoint. One, it seems like everything's a trigger right now, you know, in terms of, you know, people are just getting angrier quicker about different things. And, and, you know, people are just kind of, they're, they're getting down quicker, you know? And so I think that um, you got, you got to, you got to help build people up and, and, you know, we also got to, we also got to find ways to, to, to connect and, and work towards the middle on some things and, and, and help people, help people understand that like, you know, there is hope, there is a way, there is ways to unite. There, is, there are ways to love. There are ways to stay safe there. Are, you know what I mean? And just, oh, yeah. just, just continue to work through some of that um, so that we can, we can continue to have hope and um, you know, and that's, that's, that's what we've had to spend a lot of our time on with our players and our program. And Coach, talk, talk about those Zoom calls. You have players from Atlanta, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, all over the place. How are those calls can learn, learn about your players from their backgrounds even more than you already knew? Because for me, Coach, personally, learning about my insurance backgrounds this summer on Zoom calls really helped me out a lot. How was it for you hearing your guys' perspectives and their backgrounds on stuff that you might not have been privy to when you recruited them to bring them to Furman? Yeah, so, you know, the Zoom deal was was definitely unique. And, um, you know, one of the things that we try to do as a program is we want to have a connected program and, and, and our culture and our retention has always been a big deal here. 
and um, you know, and just just trying to be is it, it, to have as much connection to our program as possible. And you know, that was one of my fears when it went all to Zoom is is how are we going to be able to do what we do in the off season well to to glue this team together. And um, so, you know, what we started doing was we had these Zooms and, and you know, we, we basically just it was like a it, it was our, our theme was a little bit of how do we stay connected in the distance. And, um, you know, so we had two Zooms a week. One was uh, the our, our, our players decided to go through a book together that they kind of led uh, called Legacy. And um, they went through that. And then the other Zoom call, we bring in a speaker. And, um, you know, we had Jay Billis, we had Kevin Eastman, we had Phil Beckner. I mean, we, we had, we had a lot of great speakers that just poured into our team and, um, opened up a lot of different dialogue and, and a lot of different conversations. And, you know, so you, you, it, it was a different avenue, but, you know, nonetheless, we got to know each other and, um, you know, we weren't able to see each other face to face. I think that was, that was something that you really got to experience is like the, the, the psychology and the, um, even, I mean, just the feel of being face to face with somebody, right. Like, like the, the absence of that, you know, going through this screen, like not being in the presence of somebody. I thought that was interesting how you, you really it started to kind of, you could, you could sense that a little bit as time went on. Um, but you know, we just, again, we just had to push through as best we could. Yeah. And, um, you know, our players were great with it. I felt like we grew in some ways. And, um, you know, definitely made us more thankful for when we got to get back together late July. Coach, talk about how your your coaches, your assistant coaches help you out a lot with your players academically. Going from going from that in-class to virtual coach, I would have been terrible at that. So I know your assistant coaches probably have a few players they look after and your academic advisor. Talk about how the University Furman and your staff and academic advisor staff help your players get through that, that virtual transition and get, get their grades up for that spring semester throughout the summer as well. Yeah, I mean, it was that was something for us as a staff. I mean, we had to meet almost every day, you know, just to make sure we were we weren't letting everything fall through the cracks. But you know, our position coaches all have, you know, our assistants all have a position co- a group, so you know they were monitoring their position players, and then we also have our academic our team split up in academic coaches as well. So you know, mainly just making sure. And our strength coach did a phenomenal job sending them different workouts. You know, allowed they sent them all a package of you know. Uh, jump ropes and bells and all this stuff, you know, that they were able to do some in-home workouts. And so it was, it was, you know, academically, it was physically, it was, you know, all that stuff. But then there was also something where once a week we tried to do an emotional check-in, you know, just, just how are you doing and um, how's the family doing? And, you know, at first it was, it was everybody, you know, it was kind of like everybody was all right. And then as you start going through it, you know, guys start opening up a little bit more, you know, coach, this is really hard and, you know, we started trying to unpack all that, but um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just constant. It was constant of just how are they doing in all their areas while we can't see them. And, and there was, there was definitely some challenge behind that, but you know, our guys, we, we had the highest career um, grade point average at Furman for a basketball team in, in since they've been tracking it uh, this, wow. this, this past semester. And then um, in the fall and then before that, the spring, that was the highest. And so, you know, I'm really proud of our guys that they have, they, they've made some strides academically. And, um, you know, through this, we've been able to actually improve our team GPA, uh, which has been a nice little positive. And when you brought them back in July, Coach, how was that ramp up for you for you and your staff? Because you know young men want to get back out on the court. They've been caged up pretty much. want to get on the court and go hard. So how are they trying to make a practice plan so they, so they wouldn't do too much too soon and hurt themselves when they're still hurting now come December, January, and February now? So how did you avoid that by keeping them kind of, you know, give them a tempered ramp up there? Yeah, so we we did a we, – we were pretty slow just because I knew they hadn't done a lot since March. So – we focused a lot on the individual at first and did a ton of skill. And, um, you know, we, we have three or four guys at a time with three or four coaches out there and just, just a lot of hands on one-on-one. And then we built it up, you know, to, to some, you know, then we did some smaller group stuff. So we had like six or seven in a group and um, started to do some, you know, principal work and some, you know, concept work. And then after about, after about a month of that, we started to do a little bit of five on five and, um, but we really wanted to make sure our pieces were right and, um, you know, and kind of go from there. So it was, it was, it was a lot of skill, a lot of shots, you know, a lot of one-on-one. And then again, you know, smaller groups in terms of, you know, principles and concepts. And then we probably got, once we got to September is when we started doing, you know, more five-on-five. 
And, you know, I, I coach, I kind of realized through November and December that, you know, I noticed the games are getting more competitive now because in the early days, it's kind of playing, this point, play hard, keeping it simple. So for you, how's it been getting more, being on the court more, putting some more stuff in and helping you guys get more complex? Because I, I know in conference play, you got to be guys who know you. So how's that been for you guys going from that ramp up in November, December to now where you got more stuff in and the games are getting more intense as, as you guys go? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think as we as we've gotten into this in terms of the basketball piece, you know, I, I haven't seen um, there hadn't been a lot different than than previous years. I think I think what is different is everything before and after that time on the basketball court, is if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. um, and, and so you got your testing, and you got how you got to travel, and you got where you got to meet, and you got all this stuff. I think once we get out to the court, you know, it's relatively similar. Um, I think I think that the, the disruptions though are, are interesting. I mean, that's that's been, you know, navigating that has been interesting. And you know, finding out one team can't play, you think you're going to play the next day, you don't. And so now you got to practice. And kids would rather play right now than practice. I think that I think that's one thing I will say is these kids are tired of practicing. You know, like, oh yeah. I mean, it's 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 to the point where they want to play and they want to compete, and and they're getting opportunities taken off of that and so what that equates to for us coaches is more practice time and that's about the last thing these kids want right now so oh, yeah um i think that's that's something that i've seen you know that's that's interesting um you know different you know quarantine situations a guy out you know a guy here a guy there uh that's all unique you know but it's just um man it's it's at the end of the day, you got to go play the game. And, um, you know, you got to, it's, it's, I think the biggest thing for coaches right now is yes, it's hard. And we're having to navigate some things that we haven't had to navigate before, but, you know, habits are still habits and, you know, habits die hard. And, and if you get, if you get too loose in your approach through the flexibility as you navigate this, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, some of your habits start dying out because you, you neglect it a little bit, then that can pop up in games. And, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where you got to try to stay as sharp as you can and um, you got to be ready to play. Uh, but then you also got to balance this to make sure these kids are having fun while they do it. And, I, and I, I'll be I'll be I'll be honest with you. That's 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 been, you know, by now, usually we're in a pretty good routine. You know, it's kind of like, you know what you're doing today, you know what you're doing tomorrow, you know what you do, you know what you're playing in a month. Like, I mean, we're playing somebody different Saturday than we were supposed to, you know, mm -hmm. so like. We were supposed to play home Chattanooga Saturday. Now we're going to Western Saturday. You know what I mean? So it's like, and it's Tuesday. It's I'm sorry, it's Wednesday. I don't even know the days. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just, together. <laughs> I mean, it's just this thing is just it's just kind of ever evolving. So um, you know, you got to stay on your toes. You got to stay ready. And um, you know, I think that's 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 been critical as we move forward. And what's good about it for you guys is that knowing this SoCon is such a tough league and, you know, the main thing is getting that getting that automatic bid so you know this will keep your guys focused as well because you're right in the thick of it right now. I know, um, you, I know you lost two or two in a row, unfortunately, but guess what? You're still right in the mix because the main thing is when you go to that tournament in Asheville there, that you get the job done there. Yeah, at this level, you know, that's the only thing that matters. And, um, you know, heck, we had our best SoCon year ever last year in the regular season. First time the program's ever won 15 games in the league. And uh, we went out in the quarterfinals. You know what I mean? And, and so it, it's about it's about improving. And, um, you know, that's that's for us. You know, it's a funny game that that orange thing needs to go in that orange circle. And and when it does, we, we all have a lot more fun. And, um, you know, we've, we've hit a little bit of a, of a cold spell shooting these last two games. And, you um, you know, I think we were 25% from three last game and, you know, 29% the game before. And, you know, we're getting good looks. But, again, you got to be able to knock those shots down. And um, so I, I know I, we'll, we'll be fine. Our guys will bounce back. We'll, we'll get better. And, um, you know, usually the game of basketball is a law of averages, right? Oh, yes. So, it's, um, you know, we're, 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 we'll do a couple good shooting games here coming up. And, um, I, you know, I think that we got to continue – like I said, in our habits, defensively, continue to clean up a few things, and uh, we haven't been a finished a finished work all year. And so, I still think our best ball is ahead of us, and uh, we're going we're going to continue to work to get to that. I was recruiting via Zoom. I, I know you're a guy that see people in, in in the home face to face. How's recruiting been via Zoom been for your for your 21 class and your 20, class next year as well into 2022 20, as well? How's that been for you? Awful. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't like it. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, there's just, uh, 
there's just a non-connective opponent component to it that I just I'm not I'm not crazy about. And uh, we just signed a heck of a class, which which sounds funny that I'd say Zoom's terrible. And, you know, on paper, this is probably the best class we've ever had around here, you know, since I've been here. And, um, you know, so I think what's funny is in the middle of all this, I told our staff, I said, I'm done with these Zooms. Like I'm going back to the phone and I'm going back to FaceTime and I'm going I'm, I'm just going to recruit like I've always done it. And uh, I started having better conversations, you know, like looking at people on the screen and a computer and you got all these people on there and, you know, everybody's kind of routine in their answers. And then you got these slide presentations. And I just said, look, forget all that. Like, I got to get to know this kid. I got to get to know his mom and dad. And so I just started picking up the phone and I just started, hey, I know everybody else is Zooming you. I'm going to call you and um, and we're going to talk and, and, and conversations start flowing better. And so. Um, like I said, we got, I mean, we got two, we got two players from Ohio that are both in the top 10 in the state um, on most of the player rankings that you see. Uh, we got a 6'10 kid out of Florida that's going to be really good here. And then I think we got one of the best players in Tennessee and JP Pagese, uh, just a really dynamic guard. And so we signed a great class and, um, you know, but I, I, I still, and part of the reason we signed a great class was because a lot of those guys came to campus uh, before all this happened. And so, uh, you know, worried a little bit about the 22 class just because our campus is one of the best campuses in the country. Greenville's growing faster than, than, than a, I mean, a field weed. I mean, it's just unbelievable how fast the city's growing and all the things that are going on here. And, you know, our players are so special in a lot of different ways. It, it, it's we need to get people here. You know, that's, that's oh, yes. a big part of our draw. We got to get people here. And, um, you know, so hopefully, hopefully, you know, by the summer that starts to, that starts to be able to happen again. And uh, we can show people, you know, how, how unique this place is and, you know, how, how special Furman is and how special Greenville is and just how different it is and uh, get off these dang computer screens. And coach, you're in a great location. You can recruit Georgia, get guys from Atlanta and beyond Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, even Florida, even Maryland, Virginia. You're in a great spot to bring in. You can draw a circle around Furman. You got a bunch of, talent with um, a 500 mile radius of you right there in there for you to just go pick pick from which is great about where you're yeah. at absolutely i mean and that's why we, we focus on about 18 states we, we can draw from a pretty large net and um you know we, we get in the midwest a little bit as well and um you know just because of the academic pool and you know a lot of these kids especially ohio they all grew up going to myrtle beach you know so like they all they all think south carolina you know it's it's hot and warm down here so We've uh, we've done some stuff in Illinois. Uh, we've recruited Indiana, Ohio, and um, you know we've knocked on the door in the Midwest a decent amount. But at the same time, we want to make sure we're good in our breadbasket. You know, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, um, Virginia. You know, those are kind of the main staple states. Getting them in Kentucky, some. Um, you know, those we we try to spread our wings pretty good. And um, you know, our staff our staff is on it right now. We're recruiting. I mean, they're doing a tremendous job. And um, really like where we're heading from a recruiting standpoint. That's one for you, Coach. What was your quarantine hobby? My was playing the good guitar this, this summer. Learning how to do that pretty good. What's been your quarantine hobby, man? Man, I'm I'm kind of basic. I'll be honest with you. Um, I just the same stuff. I'm, I'm I love to read. That's that's the one thing that slows me down. You know, just to sit down and and, and read a book. I've, I've probably read as many books this year as I've read. You know my entire coaching career, just because I've had a little bit more, you know, time. Um, so that's probably mine, you know, just, just finding a good book and slowing down a little bit. I, I probably, I probably needed to pick up another one to be honest with you, but uh, you know, just my family's really special to me. My wife um, is, is the best and my kids, my kids are getting at that age, 10 and eight, my daughter, Audrey and my son, Mac, you know, where they've got different activities. And, and so really to be honest with you, spending time with them, being home a little bit more, uh, that was that was really special for me, and 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 through the madness of all this, you know, I'm gonna have a lot of memories from just just being a little bit more present. I think what the, uh, one good thing, probably, is not, I, I'd be on the road is you can be home with your kids more and your wife more. When you actually go home from the office, then I go see a game, and you can go home and be with the family. So that's probably one of the good things of COVID is being being able to go home after after work, not go to watch a game like you usually would. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're spoiled as a society and, um, you know, we have it a lot better in a lot of ways than we think we do. And, you know, my prediction in all this is in a year, you know, because of how much we complain as a country, you know, we're all going to be sitting around and saying, hey, can we go back to quarantine? You know, and they, I got to I got to be home a little bit more. I got to I got to see my family a little bit more. And 
I didn't get caught in the, in, you know, the, the, the hamster wheel of life of just getting going yeah. here and there and being at this and just over busy. And, um, you know, but I think, I think there's also some introspection in that where you can, you can look at things and say, okay, what do I want to take away from this that, that I want to create a little bit more balance or a little bit more boundary in my life once things do get back to normal. And that's what I'm trying to do personally is, is, you know, this is, this is important. This is my job. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily want it to be who I am. I want it to be what I do. And um, we're going to try to win as many games as anybody. I'm as, I mean, I'm as competitive as they come, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I have proper balance. And I think, I think some of this time, some of this adversity has, has created, you know, a window to really be able to evaluate that and, um, you know, try to, try to be our best as, as we start to get hopefully closer to some type of normal. No doubt. Well, Coach Richie, thank you for your time. Every year is always good to talk to you. It's time of year, man. Best luck to you and Furman as always. I always be cheering for you guys. I love the Paladins, man. Great job you do there, man. I always thanks, thank you. Thank you for your time, my brother. Absolutely, man. Come up and see us in Greenville sometime. I need to, man. I need to come up. I need to see you guys. Are you right, Coach? Like, I'll do that real soon, man. As soon as Absolutely. light lightens up, man, I got to come up there and see you guys for sure. It's on my list for sure, buddy. Absolutely. All right, man. Good talking with you. Talk to you soon. Be safe, Coach. See you soon, buddy. All right, you too. All Bye. right.